Hey guys, Josh here from Sports Headquarters. I'm out here on the ice today with Darren Bahanas from Humminbird, and we actually have a Humminbird Mega Live and a Humminbird Mega 360 on the ice with us. And we get a lot of questions at the shop, kind of what's the differences between them, what's gonna best suit your personal fishing style, and that's kind of what today's video is gonna be all about. I got one of the pros with me today, so we're gonna kind of show you some footage on both. He's gonna run through a couple of the different features and just kind of give you guys a little more in-depth review on the Mega Live and the Mega 360. So looking forward to it. Darren, I'm gonna leave it to you and we're gonna take it away. When you're using Humminbird Mega Live Imaging, it's actually really easy to set up. You don't have to overthink it. When I drop the transducer down the hole, there's really only a couple settings that I'll concern myself with. Whether I'm on down mode or forward mode, the first thing that I'll do is adjust my orientation accordingly, and then I'll set my ranges. So when I'm setting my ranges, for example, I'll go down to my forward range and I'll set it relative to the range that I wanna see. Then what I'll do is I'll go down to the downrange. That is actually set relative to the depth that you're fishing. So I'll typically take it off the auto settings and set these both to manual. From there, it's really just a matter of balancing your sensitivity and your contrast. One of the common mistakes I see a lot of people do is they have their sensitivity cranked way too high. The standard default setting for sensitivity and contrast is 10. I usually don't have to deviate too far from that, um, relative to the lure size and of course the depth that you're fishing. Right now I can certainly crank it but then you start to see a little bit too much. Your targets begin to be you know blown out a little bit too much. So I've actually got my sensitivity right now set to 10 and then the contrast, watch what happens when I drop the contrast. You'll see there's a lot more kind of blowouts, a lot more that shows up in the water column. What I'll do is I'll actually set my contrast to where I can clean a lot of that up. What I'll often do is I'll set my lure as the baseline. No different than when you're fishing a flasher or a, a sonar unit is drop your lure down to the depth that you're fishing. Set your sensitivity accordingly. You're using your lure as a baseline. As long as you can actually just track your lure, you're good to go. From there, you can balance your sensitivity. An important consideration when you're setting up the transducer angle with your Humminbird Mega Live is very straightforward, of course, when you're using the down mode. It's basically pointing straight down. But once you adjust the settings, and you can see how easy it is to adjust it in the forward setting, every click is basically 10 degrees. So when you're doing your settings adjustment on your menu, I typically want to make sure that I coincide the angle to what I actually have adjusted on the transducer. So for example, if I have it one, two, three, four clicks, which is 40 degrees, I wanna make sure that that coincides with the 40 degree angle that I have on my screen. That's actually gonna make sure that you have it paired together and basically better, you know, give you better imaging. And as it relates to the angle, I may wanna adjust this relative to the depth that I'm fishing. If I'm fishing deeper water, I only may need it in maybe 20 degrees or 30 degrees. If I'm fishing shallower water, I may wanna adjust this to the 50 or 60 degree setting. That way I'm shooting way more off to the side. So there's a lot of variations and you can see how easy it is to adjust whether it's from down mode, to forward mode, deep water, shallow water, however you want to orient that beam to target those fish that you're trying to find. Another orientation that you can set is landscape mode. For landscape, it's really just a matter of adjusting to the appropriate angle, pushing these two buttons and flipping it over and you're good to go. So there's no extra different modules or brackets that you need. You can use the existing bracket from landscape to whatever forward mode angle that you want to use to down mode, very easy to adjust. So that's some of like the cool features and some of the things that this Mega Live is capable of. Um, live imaging in general is just a super cool technology that I feel like everyone sure has nowadays. But like some of the things that a lot of people will use it for is if you're fishing inside a tent, you know, you can have it on down mode. Everyone can be using it, just drill a hole in the line or if you want to throw it off to like the farthest left or farthest right hole, have it in forward, see across. It's something that like a lot of people who maybe don't get the chance to fish a lot just like an, a, an adult video game essentially it's great entertainment in the outdoors absolutely right <laughs> and not to mention now too just to tie it in with you no know, you can add some mapping to this the new vx card has just been released the vx and vx premium which gives you a ton of cool features if you're doing a lot of boating in the summer you're trying to find some spots without having to drill a hole i guess that's cool nowadays is beforehand without mapping how deep is over there okay go drill a hole drop the transducer down now you can kind of just look on your unit see what the depth is go and catch some fish it's it's very cool you can definitely cover a lot of ground um, whether you're fishing for a suspended fish or you're targeting like a vast open area like yeah. Lake Winnipeg for, for example sure. you can literally just drill your hole scan an area there's other fish there there's not right? yeah absolutely. Um, I know you know in the, in the in the situation for you know fishing for crappie 
contrary to people think, they actually do move around. Absolutely, for sure. So you can drill in an area beyond them and literally watch them swim away. Yeah. So there's been times where we've been on the ice where we'll be on them and we're literally leapfrogging hold the, the entire hold. day. Yeah. Okay, they moved off, okay, move over about 20, 30 feet, scan them, okay, and for then sure. start punching holes and you know direct your partner to okay, drill over there. We'll literally be chasing them all day long. Yeah. If you're sitting there, I mean, there's no point in fishing where the fish aren't, right? No, exactly, so exactly. This really allows you to stay follow them. them, track them, stay on them yeah. all day long. I think that's the coolest thing is, in reference to that, guys, like you drop this transducer down, put it in forward, you can look out 100 feet, in a big circle if you don't see any fish well you're not going to be staying there right especially in lake winnipeg when there's not a lot of depth change in a short area it's different if you're on lake of the woods or some like white shell lakes where yeah you can move over 30 feet and you can drop you know 10 feet down but this is not a case in lake winnipeg drop it down do a quick scan there's no fish keep on moving so see the other nice thing too with live imaging sonar you can do this with 2d if you know what you're looking at too but is it really gives you an idea how the fish are responding to your lures, yeah, right? Absolutely. Are they in yeah. an aggressive mo uh, you know, uh, mood mood, or yeah. are they, you know, ba basically lethargic? Or sometimes what will happen is, you've seen this, right? Where a fish comes in, yeah. you do a certain, I mean, maybe you got a rattle bait, yeah. and then all of a sudden, as soon as they come up to your bait, it's like, well, you're trying to get them to go, and they don't go, but then they go over and hit your second line. Maybe sure. you got a dead stick, right? So, well, For that's sure. telling you something. You can call them in with a rattle bait, but yeah, they maybe might. that's telling you where they don't want that aggressive approach. For sure. So you can actually see live in real time What's on the happening. screen how the fish are responding to your lure. Yep. Heck, maybe it's the color. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You can for sure. basically see how they're responding and change up as you need to. Yeah. It's an amazing tool for that as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, that is the mega live portion of this little video here. So. We're gonna switch over to the Mega 360, show you guys a little bit about that. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. And we're gonna see if we can catch something. Yeah, that, too, hopefully, so. hopefully. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hummingbird Mega 360 is an amazing technology that gives you a lay of the land view over a very wide area, whether it's Mega 360, Mega Live, or Lake Master VX mapping, or even our 2D chirp sonar. There's a lot of different technologies to choose from, but Mega 360 really does stand on its own. One of the analogies that I like to use is, Imagine being in a warehouse where if you have your down looking sonar, your 2D chirp sonar, you're looking at the immediate area below you. Even with live imaging, for example, imagine having a flashlight where you're scanning that warehouse area and of course, wherever you have that angle to, that's what you're gonna see. But the neat thing with Mega360 is imagine being up top on the scaffolding or on a catwalk and it's like turning the lights on on the entire warehouse. You have an immediate view all the way around you where you can scan and it's not even really a matter about finding structure. Certainly you can see structure, but you can see different types of bottom. You can see transitions from a hard bottom to a soft bottom. And of course, you can see fish. Lake Winnipeg, for example, that's a body of water that many anglers frequent from, you know, around North America, or around the world for that matter. It's such a vast body of water and you can spend all day just trying to find fish sometimes. Um, I remember speaking to one of our pro staff who does a lot of guiding up there. And typically what you would do is you would drop a line, pull up in an area, fish for 15 minutes. There's either fish there or not, and then you move on. Well, you can spend all day just doing that. And that actually takes up a lot of time. But the great thing with Mega360 is you can drop the transducer down and you can see instantaneously at a glance as the beam refreshes, whether there's fish there or not. In fact, there's a lot of examples where we can drill a hole and we can tell if we actually want to fish there as soon as we drop it down. Some situations you might actually see it's just a flat blank bottom. Other situations you pull up to another spot and it's loaded with fish. You can even differentiate between bait fish, smaller fish, bigger fish. It's an amazing tool to give you that lay of the land perspective. And of course you can highlight the range that you want. With Mega Imaging, the menu settings are pretty intuitive. You can adjust the sensitivity as needed and of course your contrast. You really don't have to play around with it too much. It's just a matter of setting the image to what you prefer. Your sharpness setting here, whether it's off or whether you turn it on low or move it up to medium or high. The nice thing about the sharpness setting is that the higher you set it, particularly in the water column, you're actually gonna see a lot more detail. I'll usually leave mine on low as a default. You can select your range. What I'll typically do is set it anywhere from 80 to 100 feet. I usually don't deviate that far beyond 100 feet. I find 100 feet to be a good setting for most situations. If I'm fishing shallower water or maybe a more localized area, I'll actually draw that inwards. Right now, what I've had it set on is 80 feet. And for how we're fishing, I think that's a pretty decent setting. You can also select the color palette to whatever you prefer. 
Whether it's how your eyes view things or whether it's the light conditions, you can customize it to a variety of different color settings. I actually prefer typically color palette one or two. You can actually see a lot of suspended fish in the water column. And in fact, you can see the sonar shadow that's created, fish that are further off to the side. And we can actually verify that on the Mega Live and of course the 2D sonar. In fact, as this sweeps around, you'll notice that there's some rubble and boulders right here. So there's definitely some structure around where we're fishing and there's actually quite a few fish hanging around here too. So this is a pretty good spot. The other feature is the 360 speed. What you actually don't want to do is have it set too high. That's fine if you're going to be perhaps using it for open water and you just want to kind of get a you know a lay of the land and if there's any sort of structure, it's kind of like a, a core scan approach. Typically what I'll do, especially for ice fishing, is I'll drop my speed down, um, usually to around number two. Um, I find that that's a decent enough rate where you actually get a, a quick enough refresh and it also gives you better detail. So the slower that you actually have your speed set, the more detail you're going to get. Even for ice fishing, if you're fishing in a, a very specific area inside a shelter, what you can do is even just set it to one. Um, the great thing is, is that if there's anything that is there and you'll see that as it refreshes, nothing changes, well, obviously it's not a fish. I've seen many situations where, again, Lake Winnipeg, where we can actually see these school of fish come in and as it refreshes, you can see their position and how they move on further in the frame. The other thing that you can set with Mega360 is your range grid. This really just gives you a visual. You go to your main menu settings under accessories, go to Mega360 settings, and you can see your range overlay. So instantaneously, you can actually see we have our max range at 80 feet, and then the interval is basically meaning 20 feet. So it takes a little bit of the guesswork. Personally, for me, I don't like to have the range rings on. I like to have a nice clean screen because I could pretty much visualize halfway in the screen is going to be half the distance of whatever my max range is. So, but you do have that, you know, to give you an extra visual aid um, to detect are the fish 30 feet up two o'clock and this is one of the great things with mega 360 imaging again whether you're fishing shallow water um, suspended fish is you can drop this down the hole and you can see exactly where those fish are and then you can direct your partner to okay drill over there two o'clock 60 feet and be right on top of them so especially for chasing and finding fish again it's another tool mega 360 gives you that lay of the land approach over a wide area so it really does cut down the time that you have to go to try to find the fish you drop it down the hole you turn it on and you can see right away whether the fish are there and if you're going to fish that spot or not. It's an amazing technology. Hummingbird offers a wide variety of technologies to choose from, whether it's 2D chirp sonar, Mega Live, Mega DI, Mega SI, Mega 360 imaging, and of course Lake Master VX mapping. The interesting thing is that whether it's Mega Live or Mega 360, one doesn't replace the other. They actually each have their place. What I like about Mega 360 imaging is having that instantaneous lay of the land perspective. Mega Live actually allows you to go in once you found those fish to snipe them. So we're actually using these technologies together. What we'll do is we'll use our Lake Master VX mapping basically to find where do we want to focus, where on that body of water do we want to start fishing. Then we'll drop the 360 imaging down to find where they're at and then we go in with our Mega Live and our 2D chirp sonar to snipe those. One doesn't replace the other but each of them certainly has their benefits. These of course are all available at Lake Lewis Sports Headquarters. If you have any questions at all feel free to drop a comment below and they look forward to answering your questions.